So the last talk, uh, at least in this slot. Um, <clears throat> I notice people are falling asleep because the internet is getting better and better. <laughs> so Yoda says, uh, all your data are belong to us. I found a <laughs> Yoda costume. <laughs> Could come in handy someday. <laughs> so if Yoda is real, right? Sharing data is real, right? That's our that's our assumption. So I'm I'm you know I'm leading the G Network effort, which is a web service, which is currently a mouse and rat resource, and we want to add human. And I call it uh, the great data mashup. So human data has its challenges. You know, um, one approach these days is uh, the use of summary statistics for genome-wide association studies. You can safely store these in a web service. You know, if they get stolen, there's no risk of uh, privacy uh, issues. Um, but yeah, it's not good enough, you know, and we also want to work on clinical data, and William is uh, doing a lot there, William Bird. Um, and we also would like to pursue encrypted data computation, which is called homomorphic encryption, which means that you can do an analysis, some analysis, including a GWAS analysis, but you use encrypted data rather than the original data, which means you can store that in a database and you, you don't have to worry about getting stolen. Um, that was the top down, and uh, from the bottom up, we are thinking about introducing a variant graph for sequence data, make short reads and long reads because more and more of that is coming, and we really, really would like to get rid of the reference genome. So, how do these two connect in the middle? Right on the top, you have the clinical data, the human phenotyping, and from the bottom up, you have got the you know the, the genome information. So I'm going to step back a little. Um, Biohackathon, a short overview. <laughs> 12 years of Biohackathon. Started with web services, SOAP, Biomobi, remember? Some of you do. Then we started on RESTful services a bit later. Thank you, organizers. Then RDF and Sparkle, which was really great. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, but now we're heading, what I hear today, you know, Jason LD, Federation, little trains, big trains, secure algorithms, distributed machine learning, hot or cock. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what I hear a lot also and see a lot, and uh, also for the Genomic you know, Alliance for Health, APIs and APIs for human data, you know. Just, it seems to be a stack of APIs now. Um, the problem with APIs and endpoints is they keep changing, they disappear. I mean, if you check Yumi data, it's very clear. The other, the other direction we're heading is with the variant graph, and I think that's a, really a great achievement, you know, and, and we had so many good talks now, so many people are working on this. That's another thank you for the Biohackathon organizers. But the one problem with the variant graph is it does not really map well to RDF. You know, we have some performance issues here. So, I do think that RDF and graph databases, you know, will keep growing and Sparkle will keep growing. It's all great. When it comes to performance and, you know, flexibility, there are some problems. And here William comes in. Thank you, by Acton organizers. <laughs> Sparkle is a form of logic programming. Yeah, you have to realize that. Um, but it's not very powerful. Um, and logic programming, you can see, is an extension of Sparkle in, the, Sparkle in the sense, you know, that we don't have an underlying data model that's fixed to triples. Yeah, you, got, you can come up with a model that has hybrid tables, triples, even n arity uh, data types. And you, get, and you get, you know, potential critical performance gains. And I'm going to use an extra minute here. Um, you know, when you, when you map a table as a data structure into triples, it's possible. You can, you can map everything in, in triples in principle, right? But essentially the data explodes and you lose, you know, a lot of performance which you had with tables before.
then William makes a case for centralized data access, and I can, you know, I can see that happening over. It has some interesting aspects. The downsides we will get with uh, this, this approach is that we may lose some interest in operability and also discovery of what is in the database becomes more challenging. So I think we'll end up with a mixture of solutions. My goal for this hackathon, so much going on. Um, I look into logic programming for the great data mashup. I will look at the human data challenge. We are going to sequence 100,000 genomes uh, in Tennessee, it appears. Um, we want to you know, protect privacy through homomorphic uh, encryption. And then I want to work on the variant graph and scalability there. So I started with a little bit of history of the Biacaton, <clears throat> and I want to show you a picture. This was me uh, 12 years ago. <laughs> I look so innocent. <laughs> After 12 years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>